Hey everyone, I'm excited to be able to talk to you today about the system we built called Basel that tries to rethink how to build performant and expressive Byzantine intolerant databases. I'm sure most of you, whether that's entirely voluntary or not, have heard of blockchains, at least in some manner of sort. For those that have not, let me in every, any case ever so briefly outline one of the kind of use cases that we envision for Basel. Consider, for example, a consortium of banks. Traditionally, these rely on a centralized clearinghouse to facilitate financial transactions between one another. But in the spirit of reducing dependencies on external actors and improving scalability, they may want to establish a decentralized payment infrastructure between one another. This consortium of banks is made up of a permissioned, well-defined group of participants, and yet they all have potentially selfish interests, which we model as Byzantine failures, and are mutually distrustful of one another. To cooperate, these actors need solutions that allow them to maintain consistency and availability of their joint service, despite some acts potentially misbehaving or being compromised. At the heart of existing BFT and blockchain systems that address this problem lies the simple but beautiful abstraction of a totally ordered ledger. This is a really powerful abstraction because it allows our mutually distrustful parties to share and replicate data in a way that is resilient to at least some amount of compromises or malicious behavior and still agree on a common view of the system state. Totally ordering transactions trivially maintains traditional asset guarantees such as atomicity or isolation and makes it easy for applications to materialize key value stores on top. Alice and Bob were customers at cooperating but competing banks part of this BFT consortium will experience the same database and hence consistent balances. Now, while this is a powerful and desirable abstraction to build our applications around, implementing it in a way that is scalable is challenging. Roughly speaking, there are two main issues we face. For one, to construct a totally ordered ledger, we need to run a Byzantine fault tolerant agreement protocol between replicas that usually requires several round trips of message exchanges, even worse if that's all to all. They generally rely on a dedicated leader to act as a sequencer, and they usually have expensive recovery protocols that notoriously be give BFT a bad reputation of being too complex and difficult to use. On the other hand, executing transactions sequentially while trivially safe and asset compliant can become an obvious stupid bottleneck. To make matters worse, this kind of order executing pattern usually forces us into the use of transaction models that are restricted, such as stored procedures or one-shot transactions or even UTXO models that database operators in practice don't actually use very much. In fact, in a recent study performed at CMU, they found that the majority of database management systems use stored procedures less than 10% of the time. It's not very hard to see, however, that all of this is overly heavy handed for real world workloads that consist largely of commutative transactions. The transactions of Alice and Bob were trying to buy an Italian race car or gelato respectively could have been safely executed in parallel. What I'm saying is by no means a new observation and a common technique used to increase parallelization in our systems is sharding. I want to highlight, however, that while sharding is definitely necessary to scale our resources horizontally, achieving parallelism is more of a side effect that's dependent on the workloads and the quality of our partitioning. Within each shard, we still retain a total order. So sharding is for the most part, just really just a band-aid that allows to us to recoup some of the parallelism that the total order has artificially removed. Additionally, since transactions may now span multiple shards, we need to implement some sort of distributed commit protocol like two-phase commit. But now we're coordinating to establish consistency twice, once by replicating within each shard, and again by using the two-phase commit protocol across shards. We also cannot scale our shards arbitrarily because the cost of cross-shard coordination goes linearly in the and then linearly in the communication and importantly in signatures in BFT with the number of involved shards in a transaction. What we propose instead in Basel is to take a page from our crash failure database counterparts and instead of implementing a total order, implement execution that are equivalent to a total order or serializable. Take for example, the execution down the left. Serializability states that Alice, Bob, and Charlie's transactions can execute in parallel and in a non-atomic fashion because their operation outcomes are equivalent to the, se the sequential execution of first Alice, then Bob, then Charlie. With this idea in mind, we designed Basil 
which is a BFT transaction of key value store that offers interactive and asset serializable asset transactions to scale the subtraction of a totally ordered fault tolerant log. It's actually not immediately obvious what serializability means in the presence of Byzantine actors, since we can't constrain how Byzantine participants will interact with the system. So first contribution is to introduce a meaningful notion of correctness for transactional applications in a BAT setting. What we strive to guarantee is that the execution appears to correct clients as indistinguishable from a serializable execution that involves only read and write operations issued by correct clients. Framed differently, we submit that it's completely okay for a business client to wreak havoc and violate asset guarantees, as long as every correct client observes only state comprised of serializable transactions. In our paper, we formalize this notion more generally as Byzantine, for, as Byzantine isolation for arbitrary isolation levels, but in Basel, we'll strive for serializability. This is a strong correctness property to strive for, but it doesn't actually tell us anything about progress. For example, a correct Byzantine serializable system could still systematically abort all transactions or influence the outcome of our read operations. To address this notion, we introduce a second, more general BFT system property that we call Byzantine independence. It states that no group consisting of only Byzantine participants should be able to single-handedly decide the outcome of our operations. This is an important property and actually one that traditional systems that rely on a leader do not attain because this leader has undue control over transaction orderings and is able to inject transactions or front run transactions to influence results. In Basel instead, we will strive to meet this property of business independence and sidestep concerns about ordering and fairness altogether. The key to efficiently realizing both this notion of correctness and progress is the core ethos that we build based around, which we call independent operability. What independent operability states is that all operations that can be independent should also be processed independently. So in Basel, we adopt the client-driven design in which each client drives its own transaction processing and is responsible for its own progress. As part of this design, Basel tries to strike a balance between optimism to allow for aggressive parallelism and yet remain robust to failures. It's not hard to imagine that mixing and power business clients and optimism is a slippery slope and doing so safely and robustly is one of the main challenges in Basel. At the high level, Basel is made up of three core components. One, a concurrency control mechanism that allows for optimistic parallelism but ensures business serializability. Two, a commit protocol that is integrated with the concurrency control protocol to avoid redundant coordination and efficiently ensure consistency across shard replicas and across shards. And lastly, a fallback protocol that allows clients to retain independent operability and liveness in face of business failures. In the next slides, I'll briefly go over parts of these protocols at a distance, but I encourage you to read the full paper if you're curious about the details. Let me start by quickly outlining execution in Basel. Clients use an interactive transaction models and speculatively execute their own transactions in parallel with other clients. For those familiar, we extend to a replicated and Byzantine setting, a multi-version timestamp ordering protocol, which is a sophisticated but standard database concurrency control mechanism that uses timestamps to assign transactions as serialization order a priori, and also for optimistic reads of uncommitted data. In Basel, reads are sent to local replicas, but importantly, since these could be Byzantines, clients need to make sure that one, of course, these are valid values, but also two, they're not tricked into reading arbitrarily stale values. So to guarantee this, correct clients in Basel make sure to read from at least one correct replica. Writes instead are buffered locally in order to, lay, in order to delay their visibility until commit time. This is an important property for recovery and I'll touch upon it in a little bit, but the intuition here is that we do not want clients to be able to leave incomplete transactions lying around indefinitely. Now, since these speculative executions performed by clients in parallel might not actually be serializable, we need, an, we need to explicitly validate them in order to commit. To do so, clients submit their completed transactions to replicas in all involved charts, who then vote on the local safety of the execution by running a concurrency control check. This concurrency control check checks whether the snapshot experienced during execution 
conflicts with a set of previously committed or tentatively accepted transactions. Different replicas may perform these checks in different orders and hence come to different decisions if there's contention or asynchrony. To maintain Byzantine serializability, clients collect the replica votes from a shard, and if sufficiently many deem a transaction locally serializable, then it concludes that it is safe to commit on the shard. This is safe since quorum intersections ensures us that no two conflicting transactions could both reach the votes to submit, to commit. So in the example on this slide, we have six replicas who all vote to commit, which is more than sufficient to meet to fulfill this quorum intersection argument. For multi-shard transactions, clients then simply aggregate the quorum votes of each shard to form a two-phase commit decision, which maintains consistency across shards as well. In most cases, when there are no failures or there's no contention, this decision is immediately durable and clients are able to directly commit in a single round trip and commit and return to the application. Now, of course, this might not always be the case. And in some cases, concurrent transactions may conflict, which causes clients to receive either fewer commit votes on a shard or be forced to abort and retry their transaction. In this case, we need an additional round trip to make the two-phase two commit decision durable. One of my favorite insights on durability is that unlike systems that build around state machine replication protocols, we only need to do so on a single shard. So no matter how many shards are involved in the execution, this round trip is only required on one. I won't talk about the details here and instead encourage you to once again refer to the paper to learn more about the details. Another thing I will not go into detail in, but I want you to take away here is that Basil's commit protocol is designed in a way that allows neither clients nor groups of business replicas single-handedly dictate results. Clients rely on a set of replica reply votes and the set in turn for each type of decision, whether that's commit or abort and whether it's durable or not yet, must involve at least some correct replicas. This allows Basil to meet our property of business independence, which I repeat, traditional leader-based systems do not meet since this leader dictates the order and hence can reorder or inject transactions to influence results. What I swiped under the rug in previous slides, but already teased that in the, in the beginning, is the fact that empowering business clients also in particular empowers business clients. If their transactions are commutative, then this has no impact on other clients. But if they conflict, then misbehaving clients can block contending transactions or force them to abort. The way we address this in Basel is by allowing any client to drive the commit protocol for any transaction. This is perfectly safe since I already told you that only the rights of completed transactions are visible because we delayed the visibility until the commit stage and the client is not able to decide the outcome of a transaction. So it doesn't matter which client drives the commit protocol. The recovery protocol has some nice properties such as requiring only a single round trip in most cases involving again only one shard and it can be made to have linear communication complexity. Like with most BFT protocols or BFT recovery protocols I should say, the details get fairly involved but what I find especially cool is the fact that clients are not only are clients in charge of their own liveness but failures and recovery only affect containing transactions. And this is unlike existing BFT recovery protocols. They need to replace the failed leader and do so by halting all transaction processing when this leader is under the rest. Now, there's several challenges with doing recovery in the client-driven design, such as dealing with convocation or live log with multiple interested clients, which I won't talk about now, but learning about how Basel deals with those is one of the many, many pleasures you'll have in reading the full paper. At this point, I wanna cut short my, my brief overview of Basil and give you a quick recap and resume. Basil is a replicated and sharded BFT database that implements interactive transaction to offer a flexible application interface for developers. Basil beats both our properties of business serializability and business independence. On the performance side of things, Basil allows transactions to execute in parallel rather than sequentially, allows them to commit across shards in just a single round trip in most cases and can be made to have linear communication complexity. It does so without incurring the potential scalability or fairness bottleneck of the leader. And lastly, allows for independent failure handling for commutative transactions. Before we end, I wanna briefly talk about how this design translates to practice. 
We implemented a prototype and evaluated its performance over three common online transaction processing workloads, TPCC, Small Bank, and Redwiz, which all use interactive transactions but experience varying levels of contention. On the y-axis, I'm showing the peak throughput on these workloads. On the left, we compare Basel to Taper, which is a recent state-of-the-art crash failure database that uses a similar client-driven approach and also integrates distributed commit and replication. Basel's main overhead stem from the fact that it requires signatures and larger quorums to be Byzantine fault tolerant, but nonetheless, it offers quite competitive performance given the increased security. On the right, we instead compare Basel against two BFT baselines that both offer interactive transactions and concurrent execution, but unlike Basel, follow a standard modular approach that lays two-phase commit and concurrency control atop black box consensus protocols, such as hot stuff or PBFT. Here, Basel significantly outperforms both, mainly since it reduces latency by minimizing the coordination required uh, during distributed commit, which allows transactions to often commit in a single round trip. Reducing latency in turn translates into increased throughput on contention bottleneck workloads. Of course, Basel's strong performance was achieved partially on the back of the premise of empowering clients, and that includes business clients as well. So before I discuss how Basel performs under business failures, I'll try to give you an intuition for how business clients can fail most efficiently. The first and perhaps most obvious thing that a client should do is try to estimate and follow the perceived workload as closely as possible. Why? Because only conflicting transactions interact in Basel. Second, only committing transactions become visible to others. So a business client does not really get much out of sabotaging its own transaction by executing a non-serializable snapshots or reading purposefully stale or invalid values. If it followed the previous steps diligently, a client can then harm the progress of conflicting transactions by stalling the termination of its own committing transaction. It can do so in two ways. It can either stop processing, for example, pretending that it crashed, or by collecting conflicting quorums of votes and equivocating during this optional phase needed for durability. To quantify how robust Basel remains when clients misbehave like this, we evaluated in particular the impact that Byzantine clients can have on the throughput of individual correct clients, which I show on the y-axis. The impact of stalls, which are highlighted here in green, is fairly low since correct clients can usually finish them in a single round trip and in most cases don't even have to abort their own transactions by instead requiring read acquiring read dependencies on slow transactions. Dealing with equivocation instead is more involved and costly. And in the red section, we evaluated an artificial scenario in which clients can equivocate at will. However, like I previously mentioned, Basel does not allow clients to choose their own decision. So not only is equivocation detectable, but it is also exceedingly rare to succeed in making the strategy feasible to pursue in practice. Overall, we can show that despite more than 30% of total transactions being faulty, Basel remains not just live, but has robust performance since failures only affect contending transactions. And when they do, they can be recovered swiftly. I want to end by concluding that we showed with Basel that using this client-driven design, it is possible to build the abstraction of a BFT totally ordered log in a way that is both highly concurrent and yet highly resilient. We didn't spend too much time to talk, talking about the interesting technical bits. So feel free to ask me in the synchronous live Q&A session or shoot me an email. In our paper, you can find detailed discussions of the protocols that compose Basel and several further micro benchmarks to help understand Basel's performance profile. Thank you.